Hello and welcome to Kelly Yappy, a self-help podcast. We have got a great and exciting podcast for you today. We're going to be talking about this self-help therapy technique called tapping. You might also know it as EFT or emotional freedom technique. Now, I found out about this through a longtime friend of mine. She posted something on Facebook that she was getting certified as an EFT practitioner. Then she posted a sample of what this type of therapy does. And I did it and I found it just amazing. So I called her to see if she would be up for talking about it. And sure enough, she was. In fact, we, last night we did a practice session so I could experience it. And I will tell you, this is groundbreaking stuff that we're going to be talking about today. So I'm super excited to talk to you about tapping with my dear and longtime friend, Stephanie. Welcome, Stephanie. So I'm super excited that you're going to explain to us about this new exciting form of self-help technique called tapping. So in a nutshell, just real quick, just so, so people can understand how this came about, can you give us like a real quick background of how you kind of discovered this, this whole form of therapy? Sure. It's, it's actually considered a self-help tool. And um, it was actually discovered quite by accident by a clinical psychologist named Roger Callahan, who uh, had a client, uh, I believe her name was Mary, who had a, a phobia of water. And he tried a lot of things in the therapeutic setting to get her over this phobia of water. And and I'm not remembering completely the story. It's been a while since I, I read the story. But essentially, he had knowledge of the, the acupoints of the body. The, the, uh, in acupuncture, there's an energy meridian system. And he remembered that um, the, there's one particular point that corresponds with the stomach meridian. And when Mary talked about her phobia of water, she talked about having a, a feeling of, of discomfort in her stomach. And so on a whim, he had her tap on that point. In, in a moment, she was like, oh, my God, my, my fear of water is gone. And they tested. She went outside and, and, and had no fear of water. I guess there was a pool nearby. That was handy. Uh, <laughs> so she just jumped in the water? <laughs> the, the whole uh, the, the predecessor of EFT was uh, his technique, which was called TFT, or thought field therapy. So a protege of his named Gary Craig developed a modified, uh, more, simplified, more simplified format called EFT, which stands for Emotional Freedom Techniques. So in EFT, we use uh, 12 acupressure points in the body. You gave, me, you gave me a really good explanation of it yesterday, kind of like, you know, breaking down, you were, you were explaining the, fl- the fight or flight. Can you, can you do yes. that like layman's version for... Or- yes, yes, yes. So essentially, <clears throat> EFT blends elements of cognitive and exposure therapy along with fingertip tapping on uh, 12 acupoints. And what they have found is tapping literally calms the parts of the brain that send the stress response, namely the amygdala, which is where we have our fight, flight, or freeze response that happens. It literally sends a current, electrical current through the body, which brings a message of safety and it, and it calms it down. So when we do that, when we call up a stressful event and, and we use tapping, it allows the body to clear that negative charge. And you can replace that charge with a new neural pathway for a feeling of calm. So it's, it's not a mind eraser, meaning... Uh, I think I used the example yesterday of, oh, Aunt Mary threw a plate at me and you recall it now and it just makes you upset and angry and makes you want to cry. That memory is not erased, but the, the emotional charge of it still affecting you, you can look back on and go, yeah, yeah, she was a jerk <laughs> without <laughs> feeling re- re-traumatized by it. So it's, it's a very uh, amazing, very potent, powerful self-help tool and uh, I, I, in my own life, have had incredible results as a result of using it. So, well, oh, you know, I, in order to talk about this, we had a practice session yesterday 
which Stephanie told me, she's like, okay, I said, well, what do I need to do to prepare for this? And she says, no, I'll just bring, bring some water in and some Kleenex in case you, in case you need it. And I'm like, okay, I'll bring the water, but I won't, I'll bring the Kleenex just to show her <laughs> that I have the Kleenex. So by the, the middle of the session, I'm like halfway through the box of Kleenex. <laughs> I remember thinking it's like I really don't have anything to work on, Stephanie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But it was powerful. It was, you know what was interesting to me when we were doing it yesterday, Stephanie, how how I didn't even realize that this stuff was trapped inside of me until yeah. we started working on it. Yeah. And it, it just all of a sudden it it brought up like you said, it was daisy chaining, you know, things kept getting brought up and we kept work digging down and peeling that onion until we got to the center. And I'll tell you, at the end of it, I felt like I had just had like the world's best massage. You know how you come out of your massage yeah. and you're kind of like, oh my God, I can't see straight. I feel, so. <laughs> it was, it was amazing. I mean, you, I felt dizzy. Is that, is that common? It's not uncommon. Um, a lot of times when the energy gets moving, people experience it in different ways. Uh, some people have a little vertigo um, or they might feel dizzy or sleepy. Um, and it's just, it's, it's remarkable what happens when we start to release some of these things that have been trapped in the body. You know, it's, it's really something. So, so, and I'll, I'll share this because this was funny because then afterwards we were, I was at in my room and I went to go pull out my toothbrush and this, the, the roach the size of Godzilla popped out <laughs> of the drawer. Yeah. And I am like, ah! I'm freaking out because roaches are, I, that goes back to a childhood thing as well with growing up in Florida. You we have more to tap on. <laughs> <laughs> no. But I, I said, I, as I was sitting there, I said, oh, wait, I could, I could try tapping on this because that's what Stephanie was telling me about. And I remember I texted you and you kind of gave me the, I, after we had been doing it, you said, here's the, the chant you have to do, the mantra. The setup statement. Do. Yep. Mm -hmm. It's the setup statement. Yeah. And I did it. And it was amazing that it started, you know, I, I, I incorporated what part of my body was feeling the fear mm -hmm. and then, it, it released it. And, and so why don't we use that as an example to kind of explain to the audience how tapping works. So let's just say sure. you, you ran into, you know, you open up your drawer and you see this massive cockroach and it freaks you out. So go ahead and, and yeah. just kind of walk, walk a little bit if that's, if that's okay. Sure, sure, sure. So, so essentially what, what tapping does is we work with the language of the body. Because that's the way that we store memories of events and, and it's also the way that we store negative emotions. So what we see, hear, smell, taste, and touch. So frequently, as, as you, you had the perfect example yesterday, you see something that is very triggering to you and you literally have a physical sensation of, oh my God, um, I forget where you said you felt it. You, you were freaked out by the roach. It started, actually, it started in the chest. Uh-huh, uh-huh. It started in the chest. Right, right. Right, so that when we go in to tap on that, we're talking to the body. You know, e even though I'm freaked out by the roach and I have this feeling in my chest, I deeply and completely accept myself. So we're literally targeting where that sensation of emotion is being felt and the body goes, oh, okay. And then it, it can pull it up and it gives the body a chance to release it. It's funny yeah. because I chased, I, I, I was doing all the, I was basically doing the chant, but the, the feeling moved from my chest to my shoulders, mm -hmm. to my, I, I literally, I, I felt like I was driving this out uh, to the point where I'm like, uh, to the, it's at the top of my head. And it like, you know, I, I did like five rounds of it to, to mm -hmm. actually like push this emotion this negative emotion out and and then i was totally like ah, okay yeah yeah so what yeah there was a rush yeah. it's it's really it's really remarkable um i i'm i'm so fascinated by it and i feel like i could spend a lifetime just 
learning more about it and experimenting with it. And it's, yeah, I can't say enough about it. It's, it's been life-changing for me, which is one of the reasons I, I want to share it with others. And yeah, I'm glad you got relief from the uh, roach trauma <laughs> yesterday. That's really good. <laughs> yeah, that was huge for me. Um, <laughs> Steph, though, like what, who can, who can this help? This can, this can be like amazingly helpful for like veterans, I'm thinking of people yes. with addictions. I mean, yes. this is- the, the, the target audience is a, a human being experiencing stress. <laughs> <laughs> In other words, everybody. <laughs> and pretty much, pretty much. Yeah, I mean, it's, when I discovered EFT, it was uh, about 10 years ago. And from then and now, it's, it's really remarkable. Um, I mean, I just jotted down a few notes. There have been, very sophisticated studies that have been done, uh, randomized control trials, all showing how effective it is. So, you know, science is trying to understand why is it that this works. But yes, um, it's it's being used a lot for for PTSD, um, and it's it's been shown to be extremely effective for for helping people who experience PTSD process through those 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 symptoms that they have. So stress really underlies so much of, I mean, physical pain, um, depression, anxiety, uh, cravings, phobias, and, and the beauty of EFT is it's, it's, it's amazingly effective at dealing with the stress underneath a lot of those things. So, you know, it's, it's not a miracle cure, meaning if, if you have a, um, a broken leg let's say. Uh, it, it's not going to go in and, oh my God, I can walk, my, my leg is healed. But, but it can totally knock out the stress underlying that injury, which, you know, a lot of times when, when the stress around an injury or pain is lowered or eliminated, it, it can take the response to it way down as well. So this could help so. the chronic pain sufferer as well. Absolutely. There, there are many studies that have been done on fibromyalgia. Um, and there's, yeah, it's, it's really remarkable. Well, you know, and, and yeah. we, I talked about this in a previous podcast when we were talking a little bit about it yesterday, you were, you mentioned about neuroplasticity. There's just so much. Mm-hmm. We don't know about the brain that they are constantly right. finding. Right, right. The, the, the brain, the concept of neuroplasticity and being able to rewire your brain. I think we talked about this yesterday. Um, there was one study that I had read I can't remember where it was in the literature. It, it, going through this process, there's <laughs> just so much information because I'm, I'm, I'm uh, the branch of EFT that I'm becoming certified in is clinical EFT. So it's a lot, a lot, a lot of reading and study and, and understanding uh, the way that the brain works. But yes, it used to be thought that... Um, that the brain was set by a certain age, and now they're realizing that, you know, every day we're, we're, we're making neural pathways every time we encounter something new, every time we learn something new. So we do have the ability to rewire our brains, which is incredibly exciting. That is, that is really exciting stuff. So, so as an EFT practitioner, how is that different? Because you, you, I've been calling it therapy, and you keep correcting me. <laughs> You're like, yes. it's not technically called therapy. It's coaching. So right. explain that to me. Right, right. So, so as a clinical EFT practitioner, I am not a licensed mental health professional, meaning I am not licensed uh, or authorized to diagnose. So uh, it, it, it's not the situation where you come and work with me and I, I consult the DSM and go, oh, well, you know, we, we might have a borderline personality disorder here or something like that. The, the people that I work with, the presumption is that, that there is mental stability. Um, I'm not uh, authorized or qualified to work with somebody who's actively suicidal um, uh, or someone who may be experiencing a, a serious mental disturbance. Um, although just about everybody can benefit from it, but in those situations, there would need to be the understanding that there's mental stability and that, that person's psychiatrist and or therapist knows that, that we're going to be, you know, doing this. this it's kind of a supplemental, supplemental thing to their therapy. Is that correct? Correct. And that, this is a beautiful thing is, is EFT can work with, um, 
it's it's not an either or thing, Kelly. Uh, it's a, it's a very complementary tool. Uh, some people find that EFT exclusively really works for them. Other people might be in therapy, but they they want the additional work to maybe really knock out some of the underlying uh, issues that are that are really triggered by stress. So it doesn't it doesn't have to be an either or, which is a really wonderful thing. Now, um, as you're taking, like when we were going through it yesterday. Um, mm-hmm. And I was, and we were kind of getting into it. One thing that struck me was um, how in tune you seem to be with me and my emotions. Is that something that, um, as a as a practitioner, you you kind of tune into your clients' emotions that they're going through? Absolutely. I mean, it's we we say that it's a it's a client led approach, which means I'm taking all of my cues from you, and I'm and I'm watching your physicality. You know, for instance, when when uh, when there there are certain signs of release that the people will sometimes exhibit, like yawning. Some people burp. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, some some people um, will laugh. Uh, one practitioner <laughs> told me recently that she had a client that that <laughs> let out a slow fart and was like, "Oh, <laughs> I'm like, that's a relief. I haven't, had, I haven't had that happen yet." Oh my uh, gosh, I'm free! I'm free! <laughs> I'm free! I'm free! Thank God, I'm free! I'm like, well, I'm glad one of us is. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so, so, so what I do is I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely tuned, tuned in with you. And, and one of the things that we do in clinical EFT is, uh, as you remember yesterday, I kept asking you on a scale of zero to 10, where you're at with things. And we, what that is, is what we call a SUDS scale, which stands for subjective units of distress, which is on a scale of zero to 10, zero meaning, oh, I'm fine. And 10 being, I'm losing my mind where, where you might be with something. And at the beginning, I don't know if you remember, we, we were starting to talk about a specific event and you gave two examples and I asked you on a scale of zero to 10 for each of them. So we started with the one where you had the higher, uh, where you had the, the higher sub level. And then that eventually led to down the path to, I remember right. making like making this revelation that I didn't even realize still. Right. Still right. I had. And right. I remember just like, as I said it, I could see in your face and you, you did, you just pretty much said, yeah, that's a 10, right? (laughs) (laughs) Well, when they're, when, when, when someone's sitting there and they're starting to cry and there might be going into the lamb voice, it's a pretty good indication that, yeah, we've hit the jackpot on something that the, (laughs) yeah. And let me explain, here's the thing. It is, it is really a roller coaster ride because what, (laughs) what happens a lot is you go in, oh, this is what we're going to work on. But the unconscious, the unconscious places tags on things. It categorizes things that defy the logic of the cognitive brain. We have no way of knowing that these tags might exist. So it, it happens again and again where you go to work on one thing, and then after the round, the person goes, um, this is crazy, but I just had this memory of when I was eight years old. It doesn't make sense. And it's like, oh, it makes total sense because the unconscious mind goes, oh, okay, well, let me serve this up as well. We have the opportunity to clear something. And so, yeah, it's, it's, it's any time something comes up in a round of tapping, it is absolutely valid because that's what the body is serving up. Yeah. And, and, and that's as, yeah, as I was going through, I mean, when we kind of were coming to the, the close of it, I felt like a, 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 a surge of warmth come through me. Like, you know, mm-hmm. it's like, it was so, so wonderful. And yeah. now... Okay, so also there's the nine, we would have to talk about real quick, the nine points. Oh, yes. Or is it the, yeah, we, we could, yeah, we, we can talk about, that's one thing we haven't talked about yet, is, is, is how, how we structure doing rounds. And so it's, it's hard uh, on an audio podcast, people can't see it, but, but essentially we start on the, on the side of the hand. It used to be called the karate chop point, but we don't do that anymore. But it's, <laughs> it's, it's the fleshy part of the side of the hand beneath the pinky, and, and we, we, we tap on that, and we do the, what's called the setup statement three times. Um, and what that is, is, and that's, that's the part where we blend, we literally blend an element of, of cognitive and exposure therapy 
uh, with, with the tapping. And, and so we, we state what the problem is. So even though I have this problem, I deeply and completely accept myself. And we don't say the affirmation part because we're trying to talk ourselves out of it. The beauty of EFT is we are acknowledging the negative. We are acknowledging that we feel something because we've all had that experience when you try to push something down. I'm going to do an affirmation. It, it, it comes back and it, it can definitely bite you in the butt. Yeah. We, we have the opportunity when, when, we're, when we're tapping, we're opening, we're literally opening the, the portal to allow a clearing to happen. We want to talk about the negative and stressful event because while we're tapping on it, we're, we're simultaneously sending a message of soothing to the body so we 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 do the setup statement um clinical eft deals in specifics um a lot of people may have seen tapping videos on youtube or other places and and really um taking nothing away from any of that content but that tends to be what we call in clinical eft tabletop tapping it's, it, it's more of a of a general thing um and the the beauty of clinical eft is we're dealing with specific events that are specific to the universe to the individual so there's the legitimate opportunity to have a clearing. So we, we tap on the side of hand, we state the problem, we state the aff- affirmation, and then we go through the, all of the um, acupoints on the body. So top of head, inside of the eyebrow, outside of the eye, under the eye, under the nose, the chin point, the collarbone point. And then yesterday, yes, we, we did do the, um, the nine gamut procedure, which is Something we use, it's, it's uh, I think I explained it to you that it, it, it sounds crazy, looks crazy, but it really works. But that involves tapping on points and using eye rolls to engage both sides of the brain to, for, for a deeper level uh, or deeper ability to release. So. Yeah, that was that was crazy. It was so. It was so. I mean, I, I when I say it was crazy, I was like, it was crazy how well it worked. Because mm-hmm. I'm sitting there crying, and I'm like, you know, I'm I'm humming row 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 your boat, and I'm like <laughs> like, and then you're having me count backwards and roll my eyes, but but it worked. It mm-hmm. it like it 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 somehow it functions the brain. The brain kind of got what what was going on. I was like, oh. Right, you're trying to right. you're trying to rewire me here. Okay, sure, I, I, sure. I get it. Yeah, well, engaging the brain and and you know tapping while while doing the eye movements. Um, it, it kind of replicates what happens, happens to us in REM sleep. It's that phase of sleep where the body is going, okay, I, we're trying to process a whole bunch of information th- and putting labels on things. So there's, there's just so much research that's been done and, and, and a heady science behind why it works, which we don't have time to go into right now, but it is amazingly effective and yeah, so it's very cool. <laughs> Super exciting. Okay, so let's let's just now that we've t- explained this really quickly, and and we'll we'll talk about it. We'll we'll plug it again later. But go ahead and and if somebody wants to learn more about this technique, how can they go about learning more about it? Well. There's, there's way more information available now than there was when, when I discovered it kind of by accident. I mean, you, you could Google search EFT tapping. Um, the, the organization that I am certifying through is called EFT Universe. And uh, you could go to EFTUniverse.com. And there's a wealth of information um, including case studies, research briefs, great explanations on the science behind EFT. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I would definitely direct people toward that site because for me personally, um, I, I like the idea that there is uh, scholarly research backing up what it is that we're doing. So... And are you open yeah. for, if anybody has any questions, are you open for them reaching out to you, Stephanie, at all? Absolutely. Absolutely. I, as you know, I am, I'm nearing the end of my certification process. I'm, I'm getting ready to become a certified clinical EFT practitioner, which I'm immensely excited about. So, um, I have my website in the works. It's not live yet, but I'm, I am working with, with clients already, and um, I'm happy to answer questions, and I can be reached at tappingwithstephanie 
at gmail.com. <laughs> well, that's very easy to remember. With yes. that, tapping with Stephanie at gmail.com. Yes, and I spell Stephanie, S-T-E-P-H-A-N-I-E. I do have a YouTube channel. I have uh, uh, one video that's up there now, Tapping for Mothers. I'm very interested in helping stressed out mothers. And part of my plan is to uh, start putting together more, more uh, YouTube content. And yeah, so... Oh, this could not come at a better time right now with COVID, too. That's for oh, sure. Oh, no kidding. There's no a kidding. bunch of stressed out mothers out there right now. Trust me. A lot of stressed out people in general. And I, I've worked with so many different people and everybody. Honestly, I feel like all of humanity has had the Band-Aid ripped off. And what that means for different people is different things. But we are all walking around dealing in, a, in an unprecedented time. And I, I don't know anyone who is not affected by stress in some form or fashion. So, absolutely. So, we're coming to a close here, Stephanie. Yes. Time flies when you're having fun, but <laughs> we have to come to a close. So I want, I would like to give you an opportunity just to give a message. The, our motto is to um, offer a, a message of hope to help and heal. So what's your message of hope to the stressed out person today? Well, my message of hope is that you don't have to sit in it. There are solutions. There are answers. You know, for me personally, uh, emotional freedom techniques has been life changing because it's very solutions oriented. Um, it's sometimes hard in a in a therapeutic setting. You have an appointment on Tuesday, and then it's like, oh my gosh, what do I do with myself until next Tuesday? But um, I love that there is a tool like EFT that's available. We do call it a self help tool, which means anyone is able to learn how to do it. You can use it on yourself, which is marvelous in that it gives you control. It literally gives you a, a safe and gentle tool that you can use to help yourself. So I think that gives a lot of hope because right now there's so much that we can't control in the world. And so I think whenever we can grab something that we can do, it's a beautiful and powerful thing. Well, I also, and anybody who listens to Kelly Appy knows we end with a positive affirmation, a, a quote, a reading of some sort of meditation. I actually took this from a Facebook post that you posted on your EFT. So these are <laughs> Stephanie's, Stephanie's words coming at her today. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I'm going to read this because um, I, I love this. So uh-huh. Stephanie writes... A few years ago, I went for an early morning hike on my favorite trail. It was cold and so foggy that I could only see about four feet in front of me. I wanted to stay in my car. The trail is steep, and as I climbed, the visibility worsened. I had to keep my head down as I hiked because I couldn't see two paces in front of me, but I was committed, so I kept pushing ahead. Eventually, I hit the densest patch of fog, and then something happened. I found myself transported above the fog line. The sun was shining high in the sky, and the temperature was comfortable and warm. It was a completely different world. The truth is, I like to move fast. It's hard to deal with my pace towards certification and to acknowledge my progress without tacking on a, yeah, but tap, tap. (laughs) There are many things to balance in my life between family, full-time work, distance learning, and other projects. I want to get there already, but I have to remember that the value of process, every minute I spend with clients feels sacred and their sessions are especially meaningful because of all the craziness around us. I'm someone who understands overwhelm and I want to be there with tools that can help. Bit by bit, it's about having the patience to muddle through the fog because there's nothing better than getting to step into the light. Stephanie, that's beautiful. (laughs) I hope you don't mind that I read that. And I shared. don't. I don't. It, it, I called that piece the sun above the clouds. And when I did the post, I had this photo that I found of the bright sun above the clouds. And I just think, yeah, it's no matter what's going on in front of us, it's sometimes so easy to think that's all there is. But there's always a miracle door. There just always is. <laughs> 
Amen. All right. Well, thank you, Stephanie, for coming on to Kelly Appy today. It was a real treat for me. Oh, <laughs> thanks for having me. <laughs> we haven't talked in like 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> now we're all connected. <laughs> I know. So if you want to learn more about this, you know, Stephanie, you can, you can, like she gave you the websites, check out her YouTube channel. What's your YouTube channel, Stephanie? It's, it's, it's tapping with Stephanie. I, I have uh, one video that's up there now and I'm planning to, to generate more content. You're, you're hitting me right at the beginning here as I'm getting ready to launch a website and a channel, all that other stuff. Oh, but, good. Uh, yeah, you can put you can put this on there because it will have this where you can you can put it to, absolutely put it to as well. Yes, and um, <laughs> so tapping with Stephanie at gmail dot com. Reach out to yep. Stephanie; she will be happy to answer any questions you have. This is really groundbreaking, exciting stuff that we're we're going over today, and the, it's it's just starting. So I can't wait to see you know what what it brings to so many people who so badly need it today. Yes, yes. <laughs> so, once again, thanks for tuning in to Kelly Appy. Uh, if you enjoyed this podcast, subscribe. Also, check out my, uh, my YouTube channel. I do something called Monday Messages, where we start off the week with a positive message. So, check that out if you get a chance. And we will see you next week for another edition of Kelly Appy.